Welcome to the Third Side with your host, John and Stacy Edwards from ThirdSideParanormal.com. Welcome to the third side. My name's John Edwards, and joined as always by my lovely wife Stacy. Hello. And uh, today, uh, as as evidenced by last week's edition of the third side, which went a little awry, uh, a little, a little bit. Yes. Uh, we have some, you know, technical professionals in here, uh, or technically they're professional. I don't know how you how you would say <laughs> that. Um, we had some. Uh, if you let's just put it this way, if you ever see the camera go to the long shot, the one up here, <laughs> then there may be something going on in the studio. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we had definitely, we started off last week's show, for those of you who didn't see it, mm -hmm. uh, pause now, go watch it, and come back. We'll wait. Okay, as you can see from watching <laughs> last week's episode, uh, we had the witch box out and you know we yeah john was describing it and talking about what it was right and we, th we thought where we it came from we thought we'd done a few little protections but the guys being <laughs> in their infinite wisdom had also put some other cursed objects around um anyway long story short i wonder how many terrible stories start with we thought we had done some protection <laughs> it's, we should be just we fine. thought we had protection we, we've always done it this way <laughs> all those great sayings yeah um anyway <laughs> yeah we were screwed uh, almost literally, and <laughs> it it went from crazy oppressive feelings mm -hmm. to uh, a little bit of tension in the room. Uh, it, it was it was it was strange. It was strange, it was strange. stuff, and uh, that got us thinking, um, which is always a dangerous thing. Yes, and this is not a definite thing yet, but there's a lot of stuff coming up from the third side and from Avid Studios. Uh, we're working on a number of projects that are fan friendly. Are uh, you know, interactive in a lot of ways, and some things that are going to be huge. I can't talk about some of them, but I can tell you on one thing that we're working on. It's going to be another series of videos that are coming out from the third side. Mm -hmm. Can't tell you anything else about it other than the fact that it's that it's going to have a punch, and it's going to be extremely exciting for all of us involved here at Ivan Studios and the third side. And speaking of that, I always talk about how much crazy stuff happens here. Well, you have no idea. It's the the parts we talk about is a small, minute little amount of. Yeah, we tend to just mention it, right, here and there of what happens. Let's yes. put it this way: there is a particular chamber in this uh, compound uh, where, when people go in, sometimes they do things they wouldn't normally do. I did mention the wall of shame once, and the wall of shame, you know, has signatures. So we <laughs> want to bring you guys out there and, and to see what your thoughts are. Would you like to watch when we film um, our, our episodes? There's a lot of production that goes into it. Mm -hmm. So uh, behind the scenes almost, uh, a camera and a live chat uh, so you guys could you know uh, interact with somebody here at the studio, uh, one of the technicians here uh, at the studio uh, during a show and maybe watch uh, nothing fancy because this is fancy. This is, I mean, this, <laughs> this is the fancy part. Uh, but just to, you know, have a webcam going live so you guys could see some behind the scenes stuff because you don't know what you're going to see here. I mean, there might be mm -hmm. uh, an Oni run across the floor and, you know, make faces at the camera. There could be, um, you know, Persephone for all we know. I mean, we don't know what's going to happen uh, from one second to the next in this place. It's an awesome place. 
And that's what we're wanting. We're wanting to find the people out there that, you know, the mission statement includes a few lines about we want the like-minded people to have something to add and something to contribute to the place. And, you know, uh, there, there's a lot of gates. And for those of you who know, great. For those of you who don't, don't look it up. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of things here. And so if you something you'd like to see, hit this email address up and give us your thoughts on it. Let us know, you know, uh, would that be something you guys would tune into and you would force your neighbors to tune into it, top grandma, make her tune into it, mm -hmm. that kind of good stuff, especially top grandma. And if you do top your grandma, send us pictures um, to, to the same email address uh, below, uh, especially if it's in the comfy chair with some tickles. And uh, <laughs> I'm not sure where you just went with all that, but okay. <laughs> most people are not sure where I go with most things. Yes. But with that said, thirdsideparanormal.com, that's your address to let us, you know, Enter, entertain you. Let us impress you. Let us look at the web mistress over here and and her weekly pinup. Um, you just got to find it. It's on there somewhere. <laughs> it's on there somewhere. <laughs> Facebook.com slash the third side. That's where you can find all the comfy chairs you could ever want. Uh, they come in all shapes and sizes and if you don't watch out we will torture you with them. Uh, Twitter at three side para. That's the number three ch 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 side para. Uh, subscribe and that's what I've been putting more of an emphasis on this lately. Yes. We need you to subscribe on YouTube. Subscribe on iTunes. Um, however, your preferential uh, viewing or, or audio listening uh, love is, do, you know, subscribe there and then go to the other thing that you don't do and subscribe there too. Because, I mean, it's not going to hurt anything. No. I mean, is it, is it going to hurt anything? I don't think so. It's not going to hurt. It's a, a bleeding no. thing. It takes five minutes. It takes five minutes. Not even five minutes if yeah. you're good with a computer. Exactly. Exactly. Four times as long as it takes you to make love. You can go and subscribe. And with that said, I believe it might be time for some paranormal news. It's hard for us here to believe what we're reporting to you, but it does seem to be a fact. Okay, so time for the news. All right. All right, so the first story is a UFO story. Oh, and it's been a long time. It's, <laughs> no, well, maybe, I don't know. Mm. So this is about a shape-shifting UFO that was spotted over Bogota. And the man that spotted this and has... Bogota where? Columbia. Columbia where? I'm just playing. Was... <laughs> Westphalia. No, I'm sorry. Um, so this was... Westphalia. <laughs> um, this was spotted by a man who is the director and editor-in-chief of an English-language newspaper wow. in Colombia called The City Paper. So he's very credible. Um, he's not just, you know, like the guy on yeah. the corner of the street. I hate the guy on the corner of the that, street. That, you know. Especially in Colombia. May or may not be homeless and, you know, saw the... <laughs> Maybe. Keep the energy up. That's always important. It is. We it should is. have some of those. We should. I don't times. think we're allowed to. <laughs> we're not for some reason. They like to keep us down. Damn the man. So anyway, um, so his resume is very impressive. He's the editor-in-chief of this newspaper. He worked as a photojournalist for a photo agency in New York for 10 years. Um, and he had his work published in very prestigious publications, Time, New York Post, things like that. So Damn. very credible person. Yeah, I love it when uh, there's a credible UFO witness. Yes, and this happened on April 12th. As opposed to most UFO witnesses. <laughs> exactly. Uh, which, I mean, that's just how they work. I don't know why. It's almost like the aliens, like, target these people. It and, could be. I mean, I, it's probably smart for them, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they probably have, like, a mission every morning. They're like, hey, we need to find nine incredibly stupid people and one credible person see that's the point the credible people are usually smart enough not to go around spouting that they just got abducted by aliens yeah that's oh the yeah difference. you only anally probed a guy that's like <laughs> completely like uh you know slack jaw mouth breathing you know that's the guy you anally probe <laughs> so anyway <laughs> so he i eight... know what happened to me <laughs> i'm telling you i know what happened to me <laughs> Sure, it's okay. They made yourself look like a pretty black woman. And I was laying there on the table, <laughs> and they said, Hi, I'm your fifth grade teacher, and I always had a thing for Mrs. Johnson. And then the next thing I know, it was one of them grays. Very one believable. Of them grays. <laughs> That's very believable. Well, it happened to me. Um, so anyway, on April 12th, he went outside. Um, Why can't they, like, probe your ear? In the I don't know. You know, why is it... Well, I don't think you can get something in your ear very far or very big. 
Well, I so, you know. <laughs> All right. Okay, anyway. Um, so he saw this UFO, um, and he, it was shape-shifting. He said it started like a black dot, but that uh, it changed, and it began to unravel itself. And eventually it looked like, there are pictures. He took pictures. Um, it looks kind of like a figure eight, oh. sort of. And it moved in an odd manner. It didn't just fly in a straight line. You know, it was kind of moving around in the sky. And that's really bizarre that it's a shapeshifter. Yeah, it, it's very, uh, very weird. But, I mean, he's very adamant about what he saw. He did think to get his camera and try and take some pictures. They are a little blurry, but, um, you know. It makes you wonder. I mean, I, unidentified flying object is, mm -hmm. by definition, just an unidentified flying object, not necessarily right. alien technology or anything. Mm -hmm. uh, but, like, with the whole shapeshifting thing, it almost mm -hmm. beckons, like... It, to think, it, it, could it be just paranormal? I mean, not just paranormal, but some kind of paranormal elemental type. I mean, you know. maybe. I don't know, but the, he we did always, an article. We always jump to alien. We do. Uh, even we do. like if you watch like an ancient alien, every, we jump to a aliens. Mm -hmm. um, when in times, it could be something much older and much mm -hmm. more ancient this is that true. we don't quite understand completely. This is true. But this is true. But Either way. Yeah, but... Um, since this, since he is the editor in chief of this newspaper, he took it upon himself to do a whole article about his sighting. He was very detailed um, about exactly what happened, and he did note in the article that um, he 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 said, and I'll, I'll quote this. He said, "As a frustrated commercial airline pilot, I know my planes." I don't know what a frustrated commercial airline pilot is. Uh, maybe he was frustrated with his job or... It's not something you want to hear. I don't know. I mean, yeah, thank goodness sure he's, he's not a pilot yeah, anymore. Make sure he don't was lock that upset in the about cabin. It. But, um, but he does know planes. Um, he knows what they look like and what they sound like. And he studied them and studied maps and flight plans and things. And he did say that on this particular UFO... That makes me mad. You don't have to be a pilot to know what a plane looks like and sounds like. You no, know? but there I was are... like, yeah, I know what a plane looks like. I was a pilot. I've seen those wings. <laughs> I've heard that. But there are different kinds of planes. There are. Big ones, small ones. Yeah. They kind of generally look the same. Well, anyway, he said there was no fuselage, not no wings. Not planes out there. Uh, no sound. So it was not a plane. Right. So um, it was a really interesting article, interesting pictures. You'll have to definitely look at those. But I thought this was a great sighting because of it being so well, credible. The cool thing about it, mm -hmm. yes, it's credible. But also the guy's putting his entire career... Mm -hmm. um, in jeopardy because whether it's real or it's not they can let him go just because of the fact of him coming out and saying something like that and you know it sounds like he's got a great career mm -hmm. he's you know the boss and um it's not something yeah publicity that's great but that lasts a week right that lasts right. a few days mm -hmm. okay your the career that you've built for yourself and on his, it sounds like a lifetime pursuit to have respect, mm -hmm. um, you know. And when you have these kind of witnesses, all joking aside, when you have witnesses that have been longtime military and longtime commercial pilots, long, you know, this guy, uh, people who come from those walks of life, where when you say I seen a UFO, I seen something that's unexplained, that you risk being put in that same melting pot of Hey, they're crazy, they're out of their mind, you know, right. whatever. But more and more, that veil has been lifting. More mm -hmm. and more, you know, it's okay to go to Washington and talk about this. It's okay to say it on the news. It's okay to, you know, talk about it when it's not, when they're not playing X-Files music in the background and their tongue stuck in their cheek. Right. You know, that's, it, it, more and more, it's, it's because, I mean, the world's changing. Mm -hmm. um, do you remember when you were a child? Like, uh, sort of. Kind of. Um, how many times did you, you know, see stories about freaking uh, fireballs in the sky? I mean, or sinkholes every five feet. It didn't happen. Yeah, no, something's going on, folks. Mm -hmm. I mean, That's we're true. we're slowly being conditioned to be like, oh, hey, look, there was another big fireball in Russia today. That's crazy, huh? Anyway, did you make the spaghetti yet? I mean, it's it becomes normal, and it's slowly doing that. Mm -hmm. We actually had to drive around a sinkhole on the way to the studio. On the way to the studio. <laughs> A freaking uh, 12 foot deep, 13 foot wide sinkhole on the interstate to get here. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. you know, I'm sorry, but that's a little yeah. peculiar. And the point where we live, sinkholes are really 
scary because everything underneath where we live is all caverns. All caverns. And so yeah. you don't just get a sinkhole, you get a sinkhole and then a really long <laughs> drop down yeah. into a cave. It's really scary. Yeah, seriously. Yeah, so, uh, but um, in this article where he detailed everything, he did say um, that it could, it, the object shifted its shape, it could rise and fall quickly, and zip from one end of the city in a matter of seconds. So he did see it do all those things. Oh, cool. Yeah. So, and, you know, it's, it's a cool article. You should read it, and he goes into detail about what it looked like. And, yeah, and definitely. Stuff, well, so. I have to follow that link, guys, because this is a cool one that you yeah. might want to remember. Very cool story. Very cool story. Use it with your snotty friends. <laughs> All right. So, um, just kind of on the same uh, theme, UFO theme, this is just something I want to point out that was shared um, by Yahoo News, and they don't usually pick up UFO things, so I thought it was kind of cool. I thought we'd just throw a link up for it, and it's a video um, of an airline passenger catching some strange orbs out the window, and you've been seeing these things lately. People, I yeah. guess, have taken to videotaping out their airplane windows to see what they can catch, but this one was pretty cool. It, it was over Atlanta, Georgia, and there was like three, um, might have been ricochet you know, bullets. orbs or something. I don't know. Um, real, not real? I, I can't tell. I'm not an expert. So you kind of have to watch it and decide for yourself. But it was interesting looking. I thought it was kind of neat that they picked that story a, up. I've seen a lot of those orb videos lately out, out playing windows myself. It's, yeah. I, th I wonder why people would fake something I, like I that, I don't though. know. I can never do it. Yeah. Ever. I can't look out the plane window when I'm on a plane <laughs> because of the freaking Twilight Zone and and that freaking banshee on the wing. You remember what I'm <laughs> the, talking about? Yeah, the gremlin on the wing. William yeah. Shatner from the movie. From the Twilight Zone, the movie, right? No, it's, it's it's based off an old episode of the Twilight Zone. And He's out there going. <laughs> yeah, it's terrible. It's terrible. There's a free, but the one off Twilight Zone, the movie from the early '80s. Holy God, that thing is creepy. It's creeptabulous. It's terrible. Mm -hmm. Terrible. What a bad thing to put in a movie. Uh. <laughs> but yeah, it's ruined my whole ever sight scene from a plane because no. I'm afraid there's a banshee on the wing. Well, just don't sit on the wing. Sit before the wing or behind the wing. There still could be a banshee on the bleeding wing. Yeah, but if you don't see it, then it won't scare you. Yeah, but I don't want the guy beside me to see it either and look over at me and go, oh my God, there's a banshee on the wing. I used to um, I used to, have to fly a lot. As a child, we used to get fly every summer and go see my grandmother. And um, my grandmother was so funny. She hated to fly, but she did it. But she hated to fly. But anytime she would get on a plane, she would always ask for a seat in the very back of the plane. And so one time I asked her why she always wanted to sit in the back of the plane, and she said it's because she never heard of a plane ever backing into anything. So that was her that was her reason. So we never sat on the wing when we flew. <laughs> we always sat in the back of the plane. That's a fair point. Yes. I, I mean, I've never heard of a plane backing into anything. I don't know how good argument that is, but there you go. Okay, moving on. No more UFO now. We're going off the UFO, though. Um, this is a story that um, I saw in there that I thought was kind of cool. Um, it's just a, you know, something that happened. It's not really paranormal, but it it sounds cool. It's uh, about the hole in China that opened up, and they're calling it the gateway to hell. Oh, it's that the fiery gateway pit. to hell. Yes, the fiery pit that they found in China. Um, it says that geologists have been investigating a glowing orange hole that opened up on a Chinese mountain. And there is a picture. <laughs> it opened up the same day CERN started up. <laughs> it's pretty impressive. It's a huge hole. I don't know if it did. That was just a joke. Yeah, uh, but um, the heat coming out of it is so hot that you can hold a branch near it and the branch will burst into flames. That's, That's so how hot awesome. the heat is. That's, That's coming so out. That's so awesome. We should release doves or something over it and just... <laughs> <laughs> and then have dinner? What? We, I mean, no. <laughs> what is that? I, just, I don't know what that was. <laughs> not sure what that was. I apologize. Poor dogs. Um, they actually recorded a Throw temperature. Baseballs across it. <laughs> they recorded a temperature of 792 degrees Celsius. That's hot. Which is very hot. And this isn't the first time that they've had a pit like that open up in the region. Like, they... Freaking China. Um, have had them before. Yeah, so apparently China what kind is... Of, what kind of magic deals are they doing? I don't know, and but not paying. if you ever want to know where hell is, it's under China, apparently. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah I won't touch that one. I think that they are going to um, try to seal it off because of the fumes that are coming out, but I'm, I want to know how they do that. How do you seal off something that is hot enough to melt rock almost i mean it's hot <laughs> I, I mean I don't who know. goes up there to do it how do you you know i mean well, i don't understand uh, how they do that well at least they got a lot of people to i mean there's just, they got a lot of chances over there to see somebody <laughs> to do that um they um they're pretty sure i think their theory is that 
it's because of the spontaneous combustion of coal under the surface. Mm. Kind of coal yeah. spontaneous completely combust. It could be that, or mm -hmm. it could be some magical freaking. Uh, I don't know. This is bad. <laughs> well, they have um. It's bad. They mention in this article that it's really bad. It's from the underworld. They. <laughs> it's not good. <laughs> they mentioned in this article that there's a place Please. in Turkmenistan where they have a natural gas fire. They call it the door to hell, and it's been burning for forty years. That's so awesome. Yeah, I would like to see something. We could like go that. on like the hell tour. Like the, you know, and <laughs> just go see all the yeah, burning fires. Yeah, there's one fires. in the desert too that has the armed guards you can only see from the distance, and mm -hmm. people say it's like the, the gate to hell. Isn't there a continuously burning fire in the United States? Yeah, it's We've, up north. Yeah, it's like underneath a waterfall, mm -hmm. and it's a fire. Yeah, it's and behind. It just it's behind a waterfall. Continuously and burns. They call it the eternal flame. Yes, and that's not, the one we can go not see. Not the one that the uh, beautiful Susanna Hoff sang in the eighties. <laughs> we won't go to China where you could possibly fall into hell. We'll I want to go to that one. <laughs> I just want to throw dogs in it or something. Just <laughs> bad, terrible dogs that bit people already. I can't win on this one. There, no. is, is there no good sacrifices anymore? No, I don't think so. Um, I'll throw turnips. I'm trying to think of one, but I mean, no. no, there's not really. You just have to throw so that people don't care if you get rid of like Ooh, mice. <laughs> I got an idea. What about if we got a hold of people on death row, and we gave them an option? You know, do you want to sit in here, and I, you can let me go sell it to them, right? And be like, look, Frank, mm -hmm. um, you got a long time left, buddy. I mean, there's a long time left. It's kind of dank in here. Um, it smells bad. I mean, the food's terrible. Mm -hmm. Tell you what, we're going to take you to Texas Roadhouse. All right. We're going to buy you a big old juicy rib by the one you like, Frank. It's the one you like. We're going to swing you by Vegas, let you play a little bit, do whatever you like, buddy. We won't then, tell anything. Then we're going to go to China. <laughs> and you won't feel a thing. All we want you to do is you either go down there and you shut this thing off or, or you burn alive. It's 50-50 choice. <laughs> I mean, you, you might be able to do it. You're gambling, man. Take this big cork. Run up in that hole. <laughs> Why not? We can even fly a plane over it and just try to target it. <laughs> have him ride the cork down under his butt. <laughs> and, may, you know. I'm picturing cartoons now. The whole, the whole conversation's gone because now I'm just picturing a big cartoon with the guy with the big cork. Well, it would be cork cool. Cork up the hole. It would be cool. Anyway. Very cool. Very cool little story. It's probably not that cool. I don't. Really, I meant the story, not the. I don't cork condone guy. executions of any kind. Um, death penalty, bad, need to go away. Is that your political statement now? We're we're moving on. My political statement. That was all satire and humor. <laughs> we don't do that on this show. <laughs> all right. Anyway, um, so this next story is about the Vatican. Yay. Pope Francis, you got to pull a Pope Francis story out every now. And then. Oh, I can um, pull a Pope out. Every it's now and not then. technically about him, but it's a story about how they, the Vatican, has had to hire a lot more exorcists recently <laughs> in recent years. <laughs> that they've actually increased the number of priests that know how to perform exorcisms in several different areas, places that never used to have a priest that could do an exorcist. Now they they're going to have that. And you know, you know, they do that. Um, they do that conference where they teach them. You know, how they have those classes, and they all go and learn how to be exorcists uh -huh. and learn the rules and that sort of thing. Yeah. So um, this is something that they've done recently, and <laughs> so one of the funny things that happened. This, um, I think, this happened in Italy. I think they were having this in Italy, and the Vatican's chief exorcist. Um, I like to meet that guy. He came out and said that. You know he's got a twitch. He, he warns the Vatican that one of the reasons why they're having this problem is because of all the movie Hollywood recently and all the shows about vampires and things like that, that they make all these vampires beautiful and romantic. And this is the reason that young people are getting into occult things and, you know, well, yeah. Making it worse. Well, I, I agree to a point, but I, I was a little offended because I think that vampires in old horror movies were not necessarily not beautiful or Christopher romantic. Lee, Christopher <laughs> Lee's the sexiest man ever. Exactly. And nobody, you know, 
got into the occult. That guy was able. To, Christopher, Christopher Lee. Maybe Christopher they did. Lee was a, actually able to do a Dracula movie without talking because he didn't like the script. <laughs> he actually was able to do the whole. That's a good movie. The, it was a great movie. Yeah. And all you needed was his eyes and his six foot fiveness. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's all you needed. But uh, my heart melted. So many times. I don't know. I mean, maybe there there are a lot of it's more. Like, there oh are no. a lot more shows about oh vampires no. now. Please don't bite me, Dracula. You know, <laughs> I mean, come on. I'm pretty sure by the time he got close enough, they were like, "Yes, please, please bite me." Yeah. <laughs> so, um, oh, it was not only that; it was that and satanic yoga. I don't know what satanic yoga is, precisely. I don't know. <laughs> I think he just meant regular yoga, but he doesn't like yoga, <laughs> so he's calling it satanic yoga. Holy cow, I see a whole <laughs> series of DVDs. <laughs> satanic, do yoga positions while you're sacrificing the goat, you know, something, That'd I don't know. That'd be awesome. <laughs> Wouldn't that be great? All right, all right, children. But, let's, but he now, did say... <laughs> and e, just let it ease in. <laughs> it's just, I mean, that's great. But um, Satanic yoga. We're talking about the same guy. He also doesn't like fantasy novels and um, thinks that they all they lead to evil just like reading Harry Potter. Because you know Harry Potter is the gateway to evil. Eh, Harry Potter is like a gateway drug to, to <laughs> good books. I mean, I mean, no, I mean, it's a great book, but mm -hmm. I'm just saying, you get into that, you get a little, give that guy a little Tolkien, and I mean, <laughs> let him really get into it, and not just the main books, like where he's going off and trying to find out more about the elves, you know what I mean? Right. And and then from there, like, give him a little Lovecraft or something, and then be jumping on freaking Harry Potter, and until you until you really mm -hmm. start delving into it, it's not like it's a new thing. I mean, literature has been romanticizing the occult ever since there's been literature. Right. Because people have always been drawn to the allure of magic and to uh, being able to control one's own fate. Mm -hmm. And I think that the darkness will always bring people in. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just those of us who choose to, you know, dance near it and, um, and know the do's and don'ts Right. As opposed to the 15-year-old that, you know, watches the craft, I'm dating myself, and, <laughs> and goes out and tries to uh, invoke my Tries to find three you know, friends and, yeah, <laughs> yeah. and do the thing. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I thought this was an interesting article because um, they, they actually said the reason they've had to increase the number of exorcists is because the number of, of requests for help has just 100% rise That's in requests. Terrifying. But it was funny because there's another article. Do you think they're all in China? Like, no, the no, 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 no. All calling the uh, No, I think this guy's actually in, Mil in Milan, in Italy. Yeah. So, um, But there's another article kind of about this same thing. But in this article, they call um, this the Pope Francis effect because they said that uh, in the past that the Vatican hasn't really acknowledged the need for exorcism. Or they have kind of... You know, we don't really need yeah, that. Yeah, people that think they thing. can actually get help now. Right, and and since Pope Francis has been there, fault. he's been bringing attention to it, and you know, this is a real problem, and you know, we should take it seriously, oh. and you know, they talk about it, and now they they're training the priests to be exorcists. Right. So, so it's real. Okay, <laughs> out of everything we talk about, folks, hopefully, ghost and demonic possession. Is the is the one thing that's that's it's just a definite in your mind right now, like you tune this show on, mm -hmm. you're like, well, I'm not really sure about Bigfoot. I'm, I'm kind of here here on the aliens and you know the ancient aliens and mm -hmm. and, and and elementals and and, and you know uh, three toed gypsies and you know all that. But the uh, yeah, there's there's definitely ghosts and demonic possession. I mean, come mm -hmm. on, right? And a, you know, having a place like the Vatican right. or your local clergy, mm -hmm. instead of calling, you know, Ghostbusters. Right. I mean, um, well, there, there's very few groups out there that, that are respected, that are right. truly on a local level and they are respected and people know and they, they can trust them. And, you know, so a lot of times they turn to that. Uh, now, the, you know, wherever they refer to them, refer them to afterwards. Mm -hmm. It's different, but yeah, I think I think every um, I think every county should have one myself, just right. to at least check it out. Right, you and know? you know, at these training things, they actually train them um, to rule out everything else first. You know, like mental illness or any of those other uh, things that people say 
people that are possessed right. have or could possibly have. Right. Um, so, you know, I didn't say how many of the cases are actually possession because they do get they get lots of requests but right. that doesn't mean that that means that all those people are possessed right. it could be any number of just things just from being a paranormal investigator i could tell you that it's probably under 10 percent that's actual oh yeah you know, i would think so definitely i mean once you get you had so many people just when the paranormal boom happened mm -hmm. i remember being out in the mid you know like 2005 2006 doing investigations and everybody and their brother was calling you mm -hmm. for an investigation you get there and it would always be some crazy classic you know or all the neighbors would be there like they'd be there and all the neighbors would come or the worst thing is they have their own recorder already and you look over on their on their bookcase you see jay and grant's book oh yeah you know be yeah. like we've had some of those you know ah, it's not in my head yeah yeah it's in your head yeah it is oh uh, well anyway i thought that was kind of an interesting it story was interesting <laughs> it's scary as hell <laughs> okay so the next story that we're going to talk about is more of a sciencey type story, not really paranormal, but um, I thought it was really interesting. It's borderline. Um, this is the story about the Russian that has volunteered to have his head transplanted. Um, you know, why do I see a giant meme right now that just says "Meanwhile in Russia"? <laughs> and they're putting a head on yeah. something. Um, so there are there is a surgeon, um, Sergio. I cannot even say his last name. He's an Italian surgeon, and he has said that he can transplant a man's head. That like he's been working on this for years and years and years, and they've never been able to test it, obviously. Dr. Frankenstein. And this man, he's a 30-year-old Russian man. He actually has a really debilitating disease. Um, so his quality of life, I mean, he's declining. He has no good quality of life. Um, so he just decided that he would be the guinea pig for this, right. that, you know, it, that they were going to let he was going to let them try to transplant his head i guess onto another body i'm not it doesn't it's not very specific um when you look at this um this is going to open up some bad i agree i mean this is some bad bad stuff well when you look at this article down at the bottom there is a video of this particular surgeon um, at the ted talks and he's talking about this particular procedure and he's kind of it's kind of creepy. I mean, I watched it for a couple of minutes, um, but uh, I couldn't watch the whole thing. I pictured the Russian mad science. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that that's about what it is. Um, but I think that they're going to try and um, start working towards doing this. And other surgeons have come out. The reason for this article is because other surgeons have come out and said, we do not think this is a good idea. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Imagine that. And the reason being, and they don't think it, it's not that they think that he's not going to make it because that's obviously a, probably going to happen. Who knows? They're afraid that if they he successfully transplants this guy's head onto another body, <laughs> yeah. that you have no idea how, what kind of um, the, what it could do to him mentally. I mean, it, you could talk about a whole new level of you know, oh my god, psychosis or something. I mean, anything. Dude, this guy insanity just. Complete this guy insanity. will float above the building and start sh spouting fireballs from. I mean, it's going to be. What are we doing? I don't know. I, what, are, what are we doing? And I don't if know. I, if this guy takes over the world riding a, a pink <laughs> mammoth out of Russia, you know. Well, I, I mean, mean, if they take his head and they transplant it onto a healthy body and it works and this man has a better quality of life because his head's on a different body. If it works, here's what's going to happen. That's. All right. If it works, if everything's fine. <laughs> <laughs> right. If everything is fine and a okay, and, and and Dandy here gets a gets a body that works, you know, if all that works, if all that's good, it's not going to help us at all. No, it's not going to help you. It's not going to help me. It's not going to help anybody normal. What it's going to help is the freaking one percent that is going to be like, oh, you know, I'd like to have I'd like to have that washboard stomach. I can't. I don't have that anymore. You know, and let's get that guy. And they're going to bonk him on the head. They're going to take him to some third world country. <laughs> they're going to cut their freaking head off and transplant it on hot bodies. That's just what's going to happen. All of a sudden, there's going to be news reports, you know, in, in San Paulo, Brazil. You know, yeah, you won't be able to go but, anywhere anymore because... There's been, there's been oodles and oodles of missing... Cause I'll yeah, say oodles tourists are missing. There are going to be oodles and oodles of missing young Br Brazilian boys, you know. <laughs> and then you're going to see, like, all these congressmen with, like, young Brazilian boy bodies. You see, like, an 80-year-old guy's head on... <laughs> yeah. So it's like, what's going on? Oh. How you doing, Susan? 
You yeah. notice my Brazilian washboard? It's going to end up being like, it's going to be repo eventually, isn't it? It is. It's repo <laughs> the genetic opera. That's what it's going to be. Greatest movie ever, by the way. So anyway. Sir Anthony uh, Head. So not, not necessarily mm. a paranormal Great story, actor. but could t potentially be paranormal if, you know, something terrible happens. Who knows? I mean, you, you're messing with some terrible stuff there. Yeah, you are. Yeah. I think. Yeah, that might be why that freaking bloody ass burn hole came out of China's butt. <laughs> I mean, that's, that might be what's happening there. They might be saying, you know, hey, hey, hey. I mean, think about your stories. Like, if you just added your stories and, uh, like, uh, if you'd have done them reversed, it would have made all the sense in the world. If we'd have started off with, hey, this guy's playing God and he's transplanting heads on the other bodies. Second story, the Vatican needs a lot of more exorcists. Third story, there's a big freaking fireball of hell coming out of China. I mean, it's it, it all makes sense. It just makes sense. Hopefully Nicholas Cage can save us all. Of course he can. He can do anything. <laughs> okay, I have one more story for you. This is one it about Cthulhu? It is not about Cthulhu. <laughs> I was going to see if I heard praise him in the back. <laughs> it's, it's being said somewhere. Um, this is kind of a funny story. I always have to end with kind of something a little funny. But um, this is about a San Francisco man who was acquitted. <laughs> I bet he's a little funny. Acquitted of, uh... <laughs> acquitted of apartment burglary because he thought he was boarding a spaceship. That was their argument in court. Thought he was boarding a spaceship. It's a fair cop. So he was. It's, it's, I mean, it's a valid point. So this San Francisco man was accused of burglarizing an apartment last May, and he just went to court, and he was acquitted because his attorney successfully argued that the suspect was actually attempting to board a spaceship that he thought was on the roof. You know, in Doctor Who, it happened. Of course, he was a. That one flat was a actual spaceship. Right. <laughs> So, uh, this guy is named Santonio Avales, I guess is how you say it. That's he, a cool name. He was suffering... What's your name, Santonio Avales? <laughs> he was suffering a meth-induced psychosis, you oh. think? Oh. You think? Why do all the funny stories always have to do with drugs, drug-induced people? The best stories are bath salts. I guess so. Anyway, he believed that the, the end of the world was coming, and so he The guy I'm throwing in the pit, I'm uh -huh. just going to feed him bath salts first, too. <laughs> To see what happens. He'll jump in willingly. Um, so he was convinced, he convinced a resident of the building to let him into the, com the apartment complex. And he climbed a fire escape and he found an open window. Um, mental note, do not leave your windows open. Okay. And he got into the apartment and he took a, he took a little nap while he was in the apartment. A little siesta. Yeah. And then he woke up. And uh, <laughs> he took and he threw an inflatable exercise ball onto the fire escape, figuring that he could use it as transportation into the next galaxy. I don't know why that. But he took a backpack and he put a passport that wasn't his and an earthquake kit because he thought that's what he would need because the world was ending and he was going to go on this spaceship to be saved. What right. the hell is in an earthquake kit? Um, I don't know. We don't have earthquakes here. Okay. I mean, I'm sure it's, it's like just like, yeah, I'm, I'm sure the supplies and, you know, first aid or whatever. All right. So um, why he was, when he was getting ready to get out of the apartment, the guy that lived in the apartment was actually there and he was asleep. And him and his girlfriend were there and they were asleep. And he woke up and he saw him. So he attacked him and he began punching him and the woman hit him and they called 911, you know, because a strange man was in their apartment. Um, so that was what happened, and he, you know, his his lawyer got him off. But the funniest part about this, um, <laughs> yeah, funniest part about this article was that they said that um, that while you know the burglar he suffered a black eye and various bruises, the man who lived in the apartment that tackled him, um, he suffered an injured toe, and he developed a rash from the encounter. You think? Yeah. <laughs> well, you know what? They'd be really great if they're but, like, we went to go reach the man for comment that was attacked, but uh -huh. the. House was no longer there. I um I got really tickled because um just a burn mark because the article said that he was at his apartment with his girlfriend and then after this happened he developed this rash and I could just see him showing his girlfriend and her going, oh yeah remember when that guy came in I bet that's what it's from that's totally yeah where it was. Uh, that, that's yeah. where you got that rash yeah yeah remember that guy broke in <laughs> Cal Media I remember him <laughs> you tackled him and then you got this rash that's so weird yeah it's uh, <laughs> there, there, it's 
<laughs> it's just like the dude with the uh, tanna bed. You whore. You caught it from the tanna bed. Yeah. So, um, so anyway, I thought it was pretty cool. What a great lawyer Venereal he disease had. is fun for everyone. <laughs> what a, uh, what a good lawyer this guy had, had. I mean, this guy must have been. I don't know if he could afford a, a really... He's a public defender, it says, so he couldn't really afford a good lawyer. But no. what a good public defender that takes his job seriously, that actually argued... Well, you say he got him off. That he did. That's good. Um, I mean, he still had... Um, misdemeanor battery and assault because you know that he fought with the guy but he didn't get charged what do you with do? burglary what do you do and i just thought that was uh that was really I, good what a good lawyer it's a valid defense and it, <laughs> i mean <laughs> he uh, earned his money anywhere the grateful dead have been you know at some point in time i'm sure that they've i'm sure that's not the first time they've heard you know in a san francisco courtroom <laughs> well it, we thought it was a spaceship sorry about that yeah i don't i don't know i just think it's funny i just Sometimes I'd like to to know what people that are on heavy drugs like that see, because it must be so entertaining. I mean, he thought yeah. or terrifying. I don't yeah. know, one or two. I mean, he thought he was leaving Earth on an exercise ball with a backpack with an earthquake kit in it. I At mean, least they're always very thorough. Well, true. You know, true. It's like they think things out. Yeah, they're not. They just don't <laughs> just all the, you know, ratty tatty run into somebody's house. I mean, they're they're prepared. <laughs> they're prepared. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, thank uh, you, thank you for that. You're welcome. Any any story that makes me feel less insane. There you go. And that that, that is my goal. It's thank hard you. to find those. <laughs> All right. Well, that was some interesting stories, and it, it lets was. us know the state of the uh, world. And run, <laughs> run now. <laughs> Take your earthquake kit uh, with you. Yeah, but it's all bad. <laughs> Call the exorcist and. Um, Call the Vatican, seriously. Just call them and say, I got a problem. <laughs> let's, let's, let's keep that going. It was some really good stories. I really Thank appreciate you. that. Thank you. That was some good stuff. And you guys remember, let us know your thoughts and uh, uh, on seeing us, you know, maybe behind the scenes. And be on the lookout. Bolo, be on the lookout for some exciting <laughs> new things coming from the Avid Studios. Um, we are really, uh, I mean, we're going to be turning it up. Because they, they're not ready. Are. I don't think they're ready. That, who's ever ready for us? I don't think they're ready. I don't think anybody's ever ready for us. No, I don't think so. Are you, you ready so. for me? Never. Never ready. <laughs> I think that's a good thing, right? I think. All right. You're full uh, of surprises. Let's just say that. I'm full of something. Yes. ThirdSideParanormal.com. That's the address to go and see uh, beautiful, uh, luxurious uh, yoga mats. Satanic yoga mats. If you want your satanic yoga mat... You need to go to thirdsideparanormal.com, and we will try to supply that for you. Uh, Facebook.com slash thirdside. That's where you can find the uh, satanic yoga practitioners. Um, Twitter, at three side para. That's the number three. Side para. On YouTube, hit the subscribe button. Hit it. Love it. Learn it. Take it in. Because every time you hit that, You'll get the videos as soon as they hit, and you're going to be really wanting that here soon. Trust me, because we got some really cool stuff happening. You can't know. <laughs> On iTunes, subscribe. That way, when it happens, it comes to you. Mm -hmm. It's really good stuff. Leave us a review. Definitely leave us a review. Mm -hmm. And for my lovely wife, Stacy, my name's John Edwards. So long from the third side. Good night. Oh! <laughs> Yeah! <laughs>